three videos into production, it's clear that many of you enjoy watching a video talking about upcoming ships and are hungry for more. And so you've asked to see five more ships under development with some thoughts and personal expectations for those still in the pipeline. I'm Farrister, and this video will share some thoughts about a different five upcoming ships that were particularly popular requests on the last video. Once again, since these ships aren't yet available in game, these are my thoughts based on the materials published, much of which may change. So this is a little healthy speculation and please treat it accordingly, and not as a promise of exactly what will be delivered. And many of these ships have been in development for many years after being on sale, perhaps without a clear release date in sight. To some of you that's okay, and to some of you that's not okay. There's nothing wrong with either perspective, but this video won't really cover that. We're here to talk about ships today, and so that's the primary focus for this one. So, all of that said, here's the first ship up for discussion. The Misk Expanse is billed as a refinery ship. A little bigger than the Prospector, the Expanse still sits in the single-seat industrial ship category. The concept is for a mobile refinery ship with six different refinery queues for different refining methods or materials. The Expanse carries up to eight of ore pods, either for intake of ore for processing or for storage of refined goods. What makes this ship potentially interesting is that it's a soloable ship with a single pilot out to crew it but that it is likely to be reliant on a mining ship for its gameplay element. Essentially, the role is as a middleman or support ship. By pairing up with a mining ship, the Expanse might offer a miner the ability to stay out in the field for longer by drastically increasing the storage capacity of mined ore and making the whole trip more efficient with less travel time involved, and that may be particularly useful for volatile goods especially as star systems get bigger. Alternatively, the Expanse might also operate as a middleman for a small group incorporating a cargo hauler by refining ore into process materials for more efficient storage later. There may need to be some sort of a mini-game type mechanic for refining the goods, perhaps even something as simple as the Starfarer refueling system, and to some extent the ship is likely to also need tractor beam gameplay with the concept talking about integrated tractor beams to facilitate the movement of raw materials and processed ore. So, the Expanse could make for an interesting alternative option for a small group of players wanting to go out on a mining operation, and that's why it's an interesting upcoming ship. Next up is another MISC ship, the Odyssey. This video will steer away from calling this ship a Carrack Killer, but the Odyssey is certainly the MISC take on exploration. At a similar size to the Carrack, the Odyssey differentiates itself by the incorporation of a mining laser and refinery for mining and processing ore whilst away from home. The Odyssey is a little more heavily armed than the Carrack, with three remote turrets armed with size 5 weapons and is set to be equipped with the same quality of life features that make the Carrack popular, like the medical bed, hangar bay, and ground vehicle bay. Some of the concept art shows a sabre taking off from the hangar bay, which suggests it may be larger than that of the Carrack. The trade-off is that the Odyssey is expected to carry a little less cargo than the Carrack and omits the drone bay. Still, the idea of heading out amongst the stars and exploring the universe is appealing to many players, and for a small group, the Odyssey could be a very interesting platform to cater for a variety of gameplay styles, owing to those included options for exploration, combat, mining, and room for other vehicles from a single mothership. And that variety is why the Odyssey is an interesting upcoming ship. Next up is the Aegis Nautilus, the large mine-laying ship. The Nautilus appeals to many owing to three deployable options, a homing mine, a sentry mine with onboard turrets, 
and a minesweeping drone for clearing up mines. The concept is really interesting and cool, although it remains to be seen how compelling gameplay with the Nautilus will be. That's due to the nature of mine warfare, as a less active combat engagement and often as a strategic rather than a tactical asset. Mines are traditionally used as area denial, which can be useful in two dimensional land or sea, but in the three dimensions of space may be of more limited utility. That said, the potential for relatively hands off protection options for an operation could mean that for smaller groups of players, hopping in with a Nautilus first to put down some mines or turrets could then free up players to be able to do something else, like fly combat air patrol or take part in a salvage exercise. So it may be more one of those ships that doesn't stick around, but offers something useful to a group anyway. Although I may be wrong, I'll be interested to hear from any Nautilus owners in the comments. It's also worth noting that in game lore, the Nautilus is a very old ship, over 400 years old, and accordingly has its own look and style to it, which may appeal to many players. And those elements could make the Nautilus a potentially interesting upcoming ship. It can be quite challenging to select just 5 ships for these videos, especially since there are many ships as yet unreleased, so I'm sorry if the ship you're most excited about isn't covered. Maybe you can let me know your suggestion in the video comments, and who knows, perhaps that might once again prompt another video to cover your preferred ship, if you enjoyed this one. Next up is the Consolidated Outland Pioneer, Star Citizen's first base building concept ship. This huge capital ship, probably similarly sized to the 890 Jump Super Yacht, first went up for sale 6 years ago and has been in JPEG format since then. It was sold alongside a claim license, which in theory will give players a land claim upon which to build their outpost. The main unique area of the Pioneer is the Outpost Manufacture and Outpost Assembly area, where an onboard fabricator creates various modules to place down in constructing a planet side outpost. The possibilities for players to make a home of their own amongst the stars is clearly appealing to a lot of people. In addition, the Pioneer also has a number of features that make it an interesting capital ship, like a landing pad, substantial cargo bay, and a selection of manned and unmanned turrets. As somebody who has visited their fair share of prefabricated outposts in Star Citizen, the idea that some of these in future could be player constructed is certainly exciting. Equally, that's a technology that's fairly unique to the Pioneer, and is so vastly different from others in game, it wouldn't be surprised if it was a long time before we see such gameplay. Nevertheless, the Pioneer is most certainly an interesting upcoming ship. Finally for this video is the Hull E. The MISC Hull E is one of, if not the biggest player ownable ship that is expected to be introduced to the game, and is all about hauling cargo. A lot of cargo. Think massive super tanker with a mind blowing capacity for cargo containers, probably well into the thousands of SCU. There's a front section with a cockpit, a rear section with some engines, and an insanely long cargo spindle that joins the two, attached to which are potentially a huge number of cargo crates. It's a ship that is unlikely able to land, instead relying on travel between space stations or perhaps some select locations like Orizon, possibly in the same way that large ships in the real world require special docking facilities. For that reason, it might be that the true potential of the Hull E is dependent on some larger distances to travel, as well as the improvements in cargo handling that are due, well, somewhere down the line. The in-game Hull A gives a flavour, albeit much downsized into miniature form, of what the Hull E might look and feel like. It's worth adding that the concept does note that haulers may need to man turrets or provide escorts for the valuable cargo, but clearly, 
The size of the Hull E means potential for space truckers to make huge profits. And that's why the Hull E is an interesting upcoming ship. Hopefully that's been an interesting exposition on some of the upcoming ships that seem particularly interesting. If so, you might press that like button to let me know I should make more videos like this. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you might like to do that too, so that YouTube knows it should show you more videos of a similar nature. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.